Hello and welcome to the 8th part of the Lego Scratch tutorial series that you can use for the Lego Mindstorms robot inventor, for Lego Mindstorms EV3 and for Spike Prime and also for Spike Essential. In this video we will take a look on how to program the robot to stay with a certain distance to an obstacle if the distance or if the object gets closer we want to drive further away and if the object moves away we want to drive closer to the object. This is the starting point or the point where we left last part and we can use this as a const construct for a simple program that does what we want. I will show you two options in this video. The simple one that's based on this solution and after that a more complicated one remove these blocks and the other moving blocks in the question and we want to react to a distance. So we have to get a block for the ultrasonic sensor and here we have a block with the correct shape that returns a true or false value depending on the distance. I will go to centimeters because then we can imagine that a bit better. And now we have two cases. If something is closer than 15 centimeters or something is further away than 15 centimeters. There's also a third option if something is exactly 15 centimeters away, but we won't care about that because our measurements aren't very precise anyways or aren't precise enough for stuff like that anyways. So we can neglect that. But we want to drive and we want to drive away when something is closer. Maybe you've got a model that only has one motor road to drive. Then you can use this motor block and drive forwards or backwards. But I will have to use the motor blocks or the movement blocks because I've got two motors in the model. But I want to use additional movement blocks. Because here I can start with a given speed. And basically we want to drive away if something is closer than 15 centimeters. So we want to drive with a speed of minus 50%. And otherwise we want to drive forwards with a speed of 50%. So let's try the program out. That worked more or less how we wanted. I had to adjust this value to 20 centimeters because of the fork that's in front of the robot. Otherwise, the distance between the fork or the, the fork itself is too large or too long so that the model would, wouldn't work or that the program wouldn't work properly with 15 centimeters. But there's a thing that's not so nice and that's the speed of the robot. When it changes from one direction to the other one, it's pretty abrupt. And maybe we can improve that so that it isn't as abrupt. And for that, we can think about the values. So we have the ultrasonic sensor and a wall. This is the wall. Then we have the ultrasonic sensor. And we have a distance. Oh, I can draw this. And then we have a distance between the sensor and the wall. But we also have the movement speed of the motor. So the motors. Have a speed from minus 100, which is backwards with full speed to zero. This is stop to 100, which is forward with full speed. 
And let's say that the distance that we want to detect is 25 centimeters. So basically, we want to have a, a solution where the value for the motor, the speed of the motor, is zero if the distance is exactly 25 centimeters. We want to have a negative speed if the value is above or below 25 centimeters and a positive speed if the value is lower than 25 centimeters. And now we can think about that. What we can do to this value, to this value, to get to a speed value that we want. Maybe you can think about that on your own first. Maybe you come up with an idea. I will tell you the solution now, but you should think about that first. So basically, we want to have the speed. And that the speed value should be the distance that the sensor reads. minus the distance to the wall that we want to keep if it's possible. In our case, it's 25 centimeters. We can try to think what this does. So we can use a few values as examples. The distance value can be let's say between 0 and 100, but let's first check if the distance is 25. Then we would have 25 minus 25, which is equal to 0. So the speed would be 0 for the motors, and then the motors would stand still. But there are other options. The speed or well, the distance can be maybe 5 if the wall is very close. Then we can subtract 25. And then we would have minus 30. So the motor would move backwards with a speed of 30 if the wall, wall is only 5 centimeters away. And we can also use a higher value like 30 minus 25 and that would be 5. So it would drive forwards if it's farther away. And that's also already the solution. We can program it. We can use this block but we want to have a number for the distance, so we don't, don't need the sensor block anymore. We can read the distance in centimeters. And then we want to subtract the value that we, or the distance that we want to keep, 25 centimeters, as an example. And we can use that as a speed input for both speeds, for both parts, the left and the right one. And then it would work. But you might see that it's pretty slow. So we want to make it faster. We want it to make or to drive faster if it's further away and faster if it's not so far away. And you can think about that on your own, how to make the robot faster. I will tell you that now. We can simply use this calculation and multiply it with some value. So we can use maybe 2 or 3 or 5. You can try it out and see what fits best for you. And that way it will drive faster. I will use 3. And we can duplicate this and use it as an input. 
that's the program and we can try it out. It's still not perfect, but it's much smoother. That's the solution for this part. But there's one more thing. Basically, we also have to think about the cases where the value is too high or too low. With this calculation, if you multiply the value with 3, maybe the distance is 100. minus 25, that would be 75, but we multiply that with 3, so we have 75 times 3, and that's 225, I think, and that's not a speed that's available, so the motor speed is between minus 100 and 100, and basically, this is above the value that you can have. That's not important in our case because the robot knows that the maximum speed is 100. So it will use 100 even if the value is 225. But you might have to think about stuff like that for more complicated systems. Anyways, that was it for this video. I hope that you learned something and that you maybe see why mathematics and equations and stuff like that are important because that way you can figure out stuff like this where you can calculate with numbers which can be much smoother or where you can react to many more numbers in between than with just these cases. But thanks for watching. See you in the next part and bye.